One of the things that I've got is this collection of little intimate toys. So how do you find the six toys? I'm just like, oh my god, my heart. I'm Sophia. I'm Indy. We're cousins. And I'm also her carer. We want to show a light-hearted, fun look into living with a disability. We cover sex and relationships, career, housing, and Indy comes along for the ride. What up, Buttercup? So, <laughs> you know how we're doing an episode on sex and relationships? I don't even want to know. I found a neuropsychologist who specialises in disability and intimacy and stuff. Indeed. Oh, no, I hate this. Yeah, I know. Well, I can ask the questions. You can just be there. It's good. It's good for other people to know because it is a part of your life, essentially. So I'm going to book this appointment. We're going to go see Glenda and have a chat about this stuff. Cool? OK, okay. but you're asking the questions. I'm a clinical neuropsychologist and I work with people who've got changes to their brain and spine. It's really important to understand as human beings, connection is the most important thing for us. We, we can't survive in isolation. The thing with sex is it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any methods of intimacy for people who have a spinal cord injury to be able to experience sex and in intimacy? That's going to be her favourite question, but... Mm. So when you're talking about intimacy, are you talking about sex? Are you talking about touching bodies? Are you talking about penetration? Mm. Or what? That's a great question. All of the above? One of the things that I do with people is I talk about them knowing their own body, mm -hmm. doing body maps. What can you feel? Where, where do you notice sensation so that you know what feels good all over your body? And then I ask people if they've explored their own body, can they make themselves feel sexual? So I've got some things that I purchase regularly. The shop loves me, because <laughs> I buy lots of these things. And one of the things that I've got is this wonderful new collection of little intimate toys. But the thing that I love about this, and my young man that I'm working with at the moment with spinal cord injury, um, his partner is very excited because he's got control because this is a little remote control. And you put it on your shoulder and he can do this. But it means that he can give her an orgasm. That's so cool. Isn't it? Yeah. It is very cool. And it's so discreet. And I can see you curl it up as I go, oh, no, I don't want to talk about I this. just don't understand why doesn't she just do it herself? <laughs> so how do you find the sex toys? I was dying. I never want to see that again. I'm just like, oh, my God, my heart. Overall, I'm glad that we went and I'm glad that I opened myself to that experience and maybe I'll do it again in the future, maybe not, who knows? Nice. Are you going to try some sex toys? No. Are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that we need to speak to someone with a disability. So yeah. And we're getting like both ends. Does it have to be someone with with a spinal injury? Yeah. Or like, could they be paraplegic? Because how many female quads are there? Not many, because remember, 82% of spinal cord injuries are guys. Yeah. There's hardly any girls, like, even for paraplegic girls, hardly any. Okay. Yeah. So we need a female quad. Do you know anyone? Let's look on Instagram. Okay. Type New Zealand quadriplegic, type in that. Actually, okay. I come up if you type that up. She's so famous. What about Claire Freeman? Actually, that's perfect. You know her from Instagram? Yeah. She's like out there. Like, I think she's a perfect person. Cross your fingers. <laughs> Uncalled for. Thank 
hier. Oh my god, hi! How are you? Good to meet you. Years in the making, oh my gosh. It's taken so you. long. I know, right? Way too long. I'm so excited to finally meet you, particularly because we're doing an episode on sex, and I don't like to talk about sex, but I know you do. <laughs> Why are you so OK to talk about this topic and stuff? Just because I know a lot of people find it a bit, you know, awkward. Through my experiences of when I first had my accident and broke my neck, I didn't really know anybody else who was in a chair. And there wasn't much written about it. And, you know, it was the first thing I thought about was, am I going to be able to have kids? Like, is anyone going to like me? And that was my, my first issue was, no one's ever going to find me attractive again. And as I went through life and, you know, just got out there, I realised that there are a lot of discourses in my head about sexuality and disability that I had completely wrong. Mm -hmm. So because it was so helpful for you to talk to other people, you're comfortable talking about it for, like, then other people who come through and... I was based at the Spawner Unit, you know? so I did talk to a lot of the girls and the women that came through, and it was always, I'm worried about my relationship, I'm worried about sexuality, I'm worried about, you know, all these things related to intimacy and sexuality. When I was leaving the Spawner Unit, you know, one of the nurses comes and she's like, oh, I just realised we haven't had the sex talk yet, so let's go have it. <sighs> so we go into my bedroom and she's like, you just need to know that if you have sex, you can get pregnant. And that was it. Oh, gosh. That was all that yeah. I was told. Yeah, it's, there's, you know, and I think even now there's still that belief where men can kind of find out about the pleasure aspect, whereas women, it's the fertility and, and all that stuff. And I'm kind of like, well, what about the pleasure? You know, there's, there's two sides to this. You know, you want, it's not just about procreating, it's about forming a connection with someone. It's about feeling good. It's about feeling intimate. It's about being human. And we need that touch, we need that intimacy, we need that connection with other people. And then that's why I wish, you know, we kind of, we, we talk about it more. Do you feel comfortable telling us a little bit about your first sexual experience post-injury? Yeah, the first time it was really interesting. I remember thinking, oh, this is a lot easier than I thought it would be. The only thing I was concerned about was the immobility of the legs, like asking, can you pull that leg up? Can you help me with this? That was a little bit challenging, I think, in the beginning, but the only issue was I did go to the toilet, because that was one thing I was told, go to the toilet before you engage in any kind of sexual activity. And um, I left a bit of toilet paper on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to all of Claire's stories, it makes me feel like men are more open to having a relationship with a disabled woman. But what I did discover was, over time, it's not all about the schlosh down there. It's also about exploring other parts of your body that, that can be just as pleasurable. Thank you so much for this. I think I've learned a lot. Yeah, same. Yeah, because she's not learning anything from me. <laughs> <No>. So... <laughs> I think... Soph has moved away just a little bit from being a prude, which is great. I did not come out feeling any different. Not even like a little bit less of a prude, like a millimetre. No. The chair's all good? It fits and everything? Yeah, it fits perfectly. Yep. Yep. Great. OK, I've got one question for you, Ringo, just on behalf of Soph. Yep. Um, do you have any good-looking single firemen? I'm already here. Yes. <laughs> great. No, 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 we do, but... Um... Any you can bring along? There might be one that day, yes. I'll see what you're going to do.